Another uh, aircraft on the ground currently, Air France, said that you hit them or something of that nature while you were taxiing. In case you're wondering, doing a hit and run in a plane is not acceptable, just like a car. And in this case, I guess they did a hit in a flyaway. Anyway, something to know is that when planes are taxiing around the airport, even though we can fly very fast and go very fast going straight, going around turns and bends, we go very slow. Typically with my aircraft, 10 knots. That's what we're shooting for when we're making a turn. 10 knots is very slow. So you would think that you would notice if you hit something, but here's the entire audio. Air France 008, he's a calling Say again? Hey, what's from Air France 008, please, up sir. Hello, good evening. How can I help you? This is your first time calling me? Yes, this is Air France 008. We are on the standard line, and there is an Alitalia passing behind us that hit our aircraft. Uh, it's very dangerous for him uh, not to take off. Can you say this again, please? You're saying that the Alitalia aircraft hit you? Where are you? Uh, this Alitalia was to take off. Uh, better to continue to take off. Okay, where are you? Did you continue for the Alitalia? I don't know the, which Alitalia. Okay, where are you, Alitalia? Since they fly all over the world, I've noticed that some pilots have a hard time with different accents. For example, I might fly to Asia and we're speaking to Japanese, Korean, Chinese controllers, and that pilot is fine speaking and listening to English with those different accents because every country speaks English with a different accent. I know it's, you, it's kind of obvious they're speaking a different language, but different countries, the way you formulate your, your mouth and your tongue when you're talking, it's different. So you'll hear different countries speak English with these very distinct accents. A lot of times if you're, I'm speaking to somebody, I can tell just by the way they're talking where they're from. So that pilot might do well in Asia, and then I'll go to them and we'll fly around in Europe. And I've had this where we're flying through Italy and France, and the pilot is having a hard time understanding their accent. So I know that some pilots do well with some accents and terrible with other accents, but it's usually pretty clear which accent is from where. So something like this to me is very clearly French. There is an Alitalia passing behind us that hit our aircraft. Uh... It's very dangerous for him uh, not to take off. I don't know if the controller was distracted with noise that was going on in the background. You could hear those people kind of making that whoop noise. Say again? So far, this Air France pilot has said that he's Air France, I think, three different times. And the French have a very distinct accent when they're speaking English. A good friend of mine, Steph, uh, he's from France, and girls loved the way that he talked. And me and my group of friends, there was four of us, a couple of English guys, me and this guy, Steph, and we always used to hang out and girls would always be like, oh, I love the way he speaks. And we would always make fun of him and the way he would speak French, not always, but every now and again. And he would say things like, that is not how I talk. He spoke with this very French accent and girls loved it. So everybody knows how French people speak English. And I don't know why this controller is not picking up on this and thinks that he's Alitalia. If you continue for the Alitalia, I don't know the, uh, which Alitalia. Okay, where are you, Alitalia? You're already seeing how painful this is going to be because this pilot from Air France is trying to talk quickly to let the controller know to stop Alitalia from taking off. They knew that they were taxiing out to go to the runway because they're, I think, on the corner here. Air France typically, from what I remember when I would go, parked in Terminal 1. And since they're at spot nine, I'm guessing this is the parking spot right here. And with them being on the corner, I'm guessing the Alitalia pilot, when he took this turn here to head out to the runway, they probably cut the corner too tight. But since there's not a plane directly to the side of Air France, the pilot would have been able to look out the right side of his plane and see Alitalia is the plane that started heading out. The problem here is that if you look at spot nine, it is almost impossible for a plane to get so far off the yellow line to hit another aircraft that's in spot nine right here. So it is possible that the Air France pilot was actually at spot seven, looked over to their right and saw parking spot nine and thought they were in spot nine, which could have caused some confusion for the controller. I'm guilty of that myself. A lot of times when you go to gates, you'll notice all the planes are parked in directly side by side. So it'd be very hard to pick out a plane because by the time they hit you, they might be very close to another plane and you may not be able to see who it was. 
them being on the corner, it gives them a little bit of extra time to be able to look outside. Or possibly this pilot was doing the walk around and he thought, I don't know. But either way, the pilot was able to identify that it was an Alitalia plane, but he doesn't know which Alitalia plane because there could be multiple. There could be a flight going to Milan, one going to Rome. So he doesn't know which one it is, but he's trying to get that message to the controller quickly so they don't get off the ground because maybe the pilots, well, obviously the pilots didn't know about it. Otherwise, they would have stopped. You're never going to have a pilot hit something and go, let's just keep going, maybe we don't notice. Here's what happens next. Jetlag 008, we got a damage from a Nagisalia passing behind, on stand 9. Uh, I'm not aware that the pilots uh, uh, were the uh, uh, damage aircraft. Are you sure it was Alitalia? Yes, uh, the good pass uh, told me it was uh, Alitalia. Air France, where are you? As a note here, if I'm this Air France pilot, at this point, I'm extremely irritated. I'm not speaking in my first language, obviously. I've told the controller three different times that I'm Air France. I've told him that it was Alitalia that hit me. And even after saying all of those things, the controller responds with this. Are you sure it was Alitalia? And then he asks his Air France pilot, where are they parked? You would think in this situation, the Air France pilot is saying, hey, this Alitalia hit me tell them so that way they, they can cancel their takeoff clearance that that controller would call his colleague that's working in the tower that's handling the takeoffs and, and landings they would call them and say hey don't let any alitalia planes take off you would think that that's what they would do but he's not he's like confused where's this guy parked what's going on and you think it'd be a really quick call jfk doesn't have that many alitalias it's not like they're in rome or in milan where there's alitalias everywhere there's probably only going to be one or two at the airport, so you would think that would be the logical decision to do, but here's what happens next. Air France 008, I would like you to call the tower, please. Yes, Air France 008, that's the ground, and uh, for you to stop the takeoff from Alitalia because you have the made in Air France. Air France 008, please call. Are you ready to copy the phone number? Air France 008, please. To be fair, this controller is trying to figure out everything that's going on. He's obviously confused, but this pilot at Air France is trying to convey the urgency to avoid Alitalia from taking off because this is all happening over a period of several minutes and every pilot knows the closer that plane gets to taking off or taking off, there's a risk for that plane having some damage or have something malfunction or something while they're flying. So the pilot at Air France is trying to convey the urgency to this controller and the controller is completely missing it. And that's surprising to me because JFK, Newark, that in LaGuardia, those controllers are some of the fastest thinking controllers that I've ever worked with. They have extremely busy airspace. They're very fast thinking. If you've heard the audio uh, or the, saw the video that I did on Soli, you saw how fast that controller was moving. That's pretty normal for the controllers in that area. They're very fast thinking. So it's kind of surprising to me that this controller is completely missing the urgency and is like, um, go ahead and give me a call. Let me figure out exactly what's going on here. Here is the audio of with the Alitalia when they find out, now that they're already in the air, they're finding out from the controller about this damage that they think they have. Listen to this. Hey, Tyler, 611 Heavy. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, just to let you know, another uh, aircraft uh, on the ground currently, Air France, said that you hit them or something of that nature while you were taxiing. Did you uh, experience any uh, damage to the aircraft? Negative, sir. Okay, sir. It's uh, 611 Heavy. Just uh, thought I'd ask you just to make sure. Contact New York Departure, please. New York Departure, it's 611. Ciao. You've heard me talk sometimes about how pilots, when they're flying in and out of different countries, sometimes will use like a hello or a good evening or a goodbye and will use it in our native language. So obviously, Italy, ciao, hello, and goodbye. And you heard the, con you heard the pilot say that to the controller when they were leaving. This is what he said here. New York Departure, Italy, Tower 611, ciao. And it's the same sometimes when I'm going into Italy, you will say ciao or we'll say uh, in going into a place that speaks Spanish, we'll say buenos dias. So pilots do that and, and it's not really uh, officially something that you're supposed to do, but that's just something that happens. I just thought it was kind of cool that you heard the Italian pilot say that. The Alitalia flight ended up flying across the ocean fine. They went to Rome and apparently it was on the ground for one day doing some minor maintenance to whatever was damaged. And the Air France plane, I got conflicting reports. Some say it was on the ground for a few hours. Some say that it was on the ground for several days. Anyway, the thing is with airplanes, they're not built to touch like this. We can take a huge amount of wind and impact, you know, four or 500 miles an hour going across the ground. That's a big impact. 
but that is different from contact. You might notice like in a Formula One car, those cars are going very fast. They can take a lot of stuff, but if they just touch a little bit on the sides, like pieces go flying everywhere. It's kind of the same thing with a the plane. They're very, very precise in the way they were designed, and they were designed for that one thing and not things like colliding. So it's the same thing. So you might wonder, how would a pilot be taxiing around, hit another plane, not notice, and then take off? Well, the taking off because they didn't notice is kind of self-explanatory. My guess is that as they were taxiing, they probably felt a little bump, but because there's potholes, well, not potholes, because there's, there's lights and things on the ground or little holes or divots in any type of an airport, they might have thought they just hit something and didn't really think about hitting another plane. Typically, if we're close, like last night we were close coming out of uh, Chile, I think we were, and we were looking out the window because there was a plane that was kind of close. We were following the line. The guy who was taxiing was following the line. The other pilot was looking out the window to make sure that they weren't anywhere near it. So that's typically what happens. JFK is a very busy airport, so it's possible that one guy was looking at the taxi chart, one guy was taxiing the plane, and nobody was obviously looking out the window at the wingtip. Now, the Air France plane being parked, if the pilots are in there, they're going to feel that jerk motion a lot more than the Air France because they're moving. So they're going over the taxi lights or possibly small holes or something like that that are on the taxiway. So they might have thought that was what it was. I don't think they had any intention of hitting Air France and then going on purpose because at the end of the day, all pilots know anything like that is going to get traced back to you. You do something like have a tail strike, they're going to pull back all the information to figure out who actually did that. So I don't think there was any bad intentions from Alitalia here. In this audio, you're going to hear this pilot's probably his worst day as a pilot ever. We're ground, jet at 4-2, acting the service information, trying to raise taxi. Jet at 4-2, runway 5, right short, and taxi to Kilo 1. Taxi to Kilo 1, jet at 4-2. Jet 4-2, you're on the runway. Jet 4-2, ground. Jet 4-2, you up? Jet 2 You're on the runway, sir. Yeah, we'll back to that. You can't do that. You get... Live quest, go around. Go around, live quest 870. Jet 4-2, turn left to Kilo 1, get off my runway. Left Kilo 1, Jet 4-2. Jet 4-2, contact ground, he's got a phone number for you to call. Contact ground, Jet 4-2. So the first thing is important to understand exactly what's going on and where this is happening in relation to everything. And you heard the controller say, five right shortened right here. Jet 4, 2, runway 5, right shortened, taxi to Kilo 1. The controller say shortened any time that you're doing a takeoff or landing in a runway that is normally a longer distance, and now it's a shorter distance. And usually it's because they're doing some repairs or possibly extending the runway or making it wider. Or who knows what they're doing, but they'll say shortened. And the reason so that way you as a pilot, if you're planning your takeoff performance, assuming that the runway is full length or your landing performance, assuming that the runway is the full length, that now you know it is not the full length, and that obviously is relevant information to know. Because if you didn't write in there that was shortened, and there would be notifications that you would have had as a pilot to verify that before you went out to your plane. But if you didn't do all of those things, this is like a catch to say, oh, five right shortened. Oh, I didn't run the numbers as a shortened runway, or I didn't run the numbers to land on a runway that was this short. And then you have a chance to catch or prevent there being an accident. So that's why they say that. So this is the chart at the airport where this is happening, and I'm guessing, and this is a big guess here, but they're doing some construction on this area of the runway here. I don't know how far the construction is down the runway, but otherwise, if there wasn't any construction, the instructions from the controller would sound something like this. Taxi to five right via Kilo one, Kilo Delta. And that's where they would hold short before they got onto the runway. However, that being the case, I am very confused at how any commercial pilot can make the mistake of crossing or getting onto a runway without permission. I have seen it, and there are some airports where there's two runways very close together, and they've gotten onto that runway without permission. So you're landing, you roll off that runway, and sometimes the taxiway or the, the split between the two runways is very small. There have been instances where they're rolling off, don't realize just how close it is, and then end up getting onto another runway. And usually now they've written in the manuals, hey, uh, this runway, be careful because when you come off, you can get onto another runway. That honestly, I can understand where you're getting off of a, of a 
fast moving runway and then there's no markings but you're going to have markings before you get onto a runway so it's it was a little confusing to me how a pilot could make this mistake especially on the takeoff as you're getting ready for takeoff you've got everything organized and you're ready to go when you're landing i could see it more because of the the circumstances you're getting off things are moving kind of quickly you're transitioning from one stage flying into taxiing figuring out where you're parking so i can see that more on landing than i can on taking off it just seems a little bit strange to me now one thing i've learned as a pilot is sometimes you make mistakes but you have to just let them go unfortunately you can't go back in time and change it and because you can't do that when you make the mistake you have to just let it go sometimes resettle yourself this pilot didn't do this. If you listen to this audio, this is the controller talking to another plane about that plane, and you'll hear kind of what happened with that other pilot. Listen to this. He ended up cutting off two people, turn around and taxi back to and ground had to stop him. As a pilot, when you make a mistake, you wish you could go back in time and change it, but unfortunately, we can't do that. In flight school, when you're getting an exam done, your instructor tells you, if you make a mistake during your exam, don't think about it, just let it go. Don't talk to your examiner about it, forget about it, go to the next thing. Because that mistake that you made might not have been a big deal to cause you to fail, but if you focus on that, the next four or five things that you're going to do is going to make a mistake on those, and then that all together is going to make you fail your exam. But this pilot unfortunately made this very big mistake, going onto a runway without permission, huge mistake, but then made more mistakes. Sometimes it would have been better in my mind, to just set the brake, give yourself a second, compose yourself, and then go forward. I've made the mistake where I've made a mistake and then started trying to make quick reactions to that problem instead of taking a second and reanalyzing everything. So do better than I do while I'm out flying. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.